If somebody is trying to brute force their way into your system, you need to stop them. But not with this. This is just some camera equipment. You need to use firewall rules. Previously, we set up port knocking, which is going to hide your ports from most potential attackers. But regardless whether you are using it or not, I'm going to show you some more firewall rules that you can use to limit the login attempts on your device. Here's the idea. Whenever somebody is attempting to log into your device, they're opening up a new connection. So we can set up a series of address lists, just like we did in port knocking. But when they move to the final stage, instead of being allowed access to your router, they get put in a blacklist. With Winbox, this would be straightforward because whenever you fail to log in, the connection is dropped. So one new connection is one new login. But SSH allows you to make three login attempts before it drops the connection. So keep this in mind when setting up the following rules. As you can see, I've set up four rules that add an address to an address list. There's first attempt, second attempt, third attempt, and finally they get put in a blacklist. And I have named the lists connection one, connection two, connection three, and finally brute force blacklist. And then I have a rule that accepts any connection from an address that is not in the brute force blacklist to the destination port. To simulate the functionality of a regular uh, firewall that drops all incoming connections on a WAN port. An interesting thing you might notice about my example is that I am increasing the address list timeout with each connection attempt. I'm not just doubling it, I'm increasing even further. There is a good reason for this. If I was an attacker, I could realize that making an X login attempts puts me in a blacklist and I'm no longer allowed to connect for an entire day. But if I do an X minus one connection attempts, I'm only timed out for, let's say five minutes, and then I can try again. So I could write a script for that. In this example, since it is for SSH, each new connection gets three login attempts. So three new connections actually means nine connection attempts that you get before you're put in a blacklist. So if you were to do nine connection attempts, you would have to wait one hour before you can try again. Better yet, you could make only six attempts and then have to wait 15 minutes, or better yet, make only three attempts and then wait five minutes. So the point is the maximum attempts that the attacker can squeeze out of this is three per five minutes, which is not a lot and would take a very long time to guess your password if your password is strong. Now let's make some wrong login attempts. And some more. If we now check our address list, you can see that I've already been put into connection one and connection two. So if I continue guessing, I'll be put in the blacklist. But now let's say I remember my password and I log in. Okay. Now in the address list, I'm still there. If I were to open up more SSH connections to my device, I would essentially blacklist myself. So for this to be an actually reliable method, you would need to come up with a way how to remove yourself from these um, address lists or to somehow whitelist yourself. Um, I don't think you can quite do it with firewall rules, but you could come up with a script which monitors your log messages. As you can see, you got these log messages saying login failure for user with an IP address. So you could have a script which blacklists that address. But that would be too complicated to include in this video. If you wish to learn more about security aspects of Microtech devices, I suggest you get Microtech certified. In fact, here I have the material from Microtech Certified Security Engineer, which I was given when I attended a boot camp in Riga. 
if you wish to get certified too, go to microtech.com slash training and you can find boot camps that are happening all around the world, perhaps even near you.